This is the way. I really, really, really should have used that intro back when The Mandalorian was still a good show. We still have the first two seasons. All right. Today we're going to talk about Miyamoto Musashi. And in the, in the Book of Five Rings in the Earth chapter, he talks very briefly about how the, the way of the warrior is the way of culture and, and conflict. He doesn't talk a lot about culture. He talks a little bit about it. It's kind of spattered in there. Mostly he's concerned with the conflict part. But he does acknowledge that culture was part of their way. Now, the idea of culture and conflict both being within the purview of the warrior class is by no means limited to Japan or Asia or, or the East. That's definitely something that was part of the Western culture as well. You don't see as much about it from that standpoint as a statement if you look at, at least from what I've seen, in a lot of the historical texts. But if you read any literature, um, you can see that it was just part of their life. Um, you can look at examples like the Green Knight, where the court manners and how men and women interacted at court was probably a lot more sophisticated and a lot more interesting than the way that's often displayed in films and various things. Okay, what else can we do on the culture standpoint? Culture is kind of weird because culture changes and what's considered cultural changes. So that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to develop an interest in classical literature or classical music or start going to plays. If you want to, that's fine. But you should find some way to cultivate your intellect if you're not, if you're not doing that currently. You may be, and if you are, fantastic. But if you're not, or if you feel like you've kind of petered out, find something that stimulates you. When you learn new skills, you develop new neural pathways. It helps with the plasticity of your brain. It's going to keep you young. And it doesn't matter how old you are. You can be young. Developing that habit is going to be good for you, and it's just a good habit to get into. I think a lot of people... A lot of people seem to learn to hate learning. I don't know how many people I've talked to who hate reading and they don't like learning and it's because of their college experience. That's just wrong. Similarly, I, I know a lot of people who hate exercise because in middle school or high school, they had some coach, some out of shape, uninterested, belligerent coach who made kids miserable and just taught them to hate fitness. And both those things are, I feel almost criminal. You should, you know, I'm making this video about culture and conflict. Obviously I feel like you should cultivate your intellect and you should also cultivate your health and your physical capabilities. If you're not cultivating your intellect, find a book that's interesting. A good way to do this is to pick up a new interest or to revisit an interest that maybe you haven't seen in a long time. But it takes about two to five years to master a skill. So if you're bored and all you're doing is scrolling social media, trying to find something that stimulates you, find a hobby, okay? Find a good book. I don't care if it's gardening or martial arts or exercise or driving a race car. Find something that interests you and go learn about it. Now, on the conflict side, that's not going to apply to all people. You might be someone who has like a martial arts background or a combative background, military, law enforcement, what have you. Or you could just be a normal person who is a protector in the sense of being um, in a family or maybe even a work situation. That, that can take a lot of different shapes. But if you have the mindset of being a protector type of a person, you need to have skills to back that up. And you also need to understand the legality of where you live and what you can do legally. And it's a whole big subject. We're not going to go into all the nuances of it today. I think what I want to kind of pull this back and relate it to is um, I talk about Sparta a lot. If we go back to Greece, not just the Spartans, but that type of warfare they engaged in, they had the idea of the, the person, the way they did the phalanxes, everyone was partially protected by the person next to them in their shield. And so if you were in a phalanx, you had a responsibility to be able to handle that shield because the person next to you was depending on that. In the case of the Spartans, the only person who was not depending on that was the king because he led from the front. He was in the front line on the right side. His shield was covering him a little bit, but it was also covering the person next to him and his right side was exposed. I'll probably make another video about that because it's interesting, but they led from the front. If you 
can identify that you're in a situation where you might have a responsibility to keep other people safe, you can't take care of other people unless you take care of yourself. So that means you need to have some kind of physical condition and you need to have some kind of a skill set. It doesn't have to be a martial skill set. It might mean you need to learn first aid. From a self-defense standpoint, a lot of that comes down to situational awareness and just being able to identify situations that are potentially dangerous and getting whoever you care about out. The thing I'm going to kind of close with is if you do have some kind of a martial background or some kind of a combative background, it is easier to polish than it is to forge. So if you have developed some kind of a skill set, it's easier to maintain that than it is to develop it in the first place. What that means is if you're thinking about back in the day when you did whatever and you had to train a lot and went to a lot of classes and you don't have time for that because you have a family or a job or both or whatever, I would put out there that maintaining that skill doesn't take as much energy as it did to build that skill. Now, if you don't have any skills, I would encourage you to develop some. Ideally, you'll you'll never need any type of skills to keep yourself safe or your family safe or your coworkers safe. I think another way I can put that is if you develop those things, with those things comes mindset, which is something I talk about a lot. And the situational awareness that comes with those subjects and the mindset that goes with it can do a lot to help you extract yourself and people under your care out of a situation if something starts to develop. Closing thoughts. If you watch this, there's a chance that you're sort of of this mindset. So do something to cultivate your intellect. That can do a lot of different things. Just engage in something creative or interesting that makes you think about something you don't know about or that you have to learn about. Actually, another thing I can say about that, if you are of a martial mindset or a combative mindset or even a fitness mindset, Sometimes people that are like that, it can really help you socially to learn about things that have nothing to do with those subjects. That's been a challenge for me. And again, I'm not saying I've mastered that. Picking up some interests that have nothing to do with those interests can just, it'll, it'll round you out a little bit. and It can make parties a little bit less miserable or social gatherings. Okay, and on the conflict side, if you are of that kind of persuasion, keep those skills somewhat polished. Because you never know. We don't get to choose when we're going to need those. If you're not of that kind of persuasion and you just think I'm crazy, that's fine. But let's break that down into some some things that are potentially more practical. Do you know how to change the tire on your vehicle? Do you know how to change the tire on your spouse's vehicle or your child's or your parents for that matter? You do not want to learn to change a tire when you need to change a tire. You should know how to do that in advance so that if you need to change a tire, you understand how to get the vehicle to a safe place and how to do that in a way so you don't get killed by someone who's checking their Twitter feed while you're changing a tire on the freeway, which isn't where you should change a tire. Do you know first aid? There's a lot of things you can do to put yourself in a position on the physical side of things to where you are functional in some kind of an emergency. There's a a lot of YouTube channels that talk about preparedness. Mike Glover's really good. I like him. American Contingency is the company he owns. That's good. There are ways you can explore this, but a while back, uh, I saw a video on another channel and the the caption of the video was a photograph from a flood that happened somewhere. This is, and there was a, a husband and wife and there was a big muscular guy carrying the wife and the husband was out of shape and he was carrying a pair of shoes. And the caption said, don't be the guy carrying the shoes. And the point was just that, you know, you've got a couple and this guy needed another man to rescue his wife. There are times when we all need help, and I'm not suggesting that's that we don't, but just, all right, I have exceeded my word count for today and probably tomorrow. This was supposed to be a short video. But all I had to talk about was culture and conflict, and now I'm talking about carrying shoes. So go read a book.